Hello everyone, this is Philip. I'll give you guys a quick midday update here um, before I gotta take off on a family trip here. Just a brief today to the zoo. Um, there's been some information that's come out over the last uh, last day or so since my last update. Um, I'm gonna show you guys some of the pictures that have come in. Um, we got some USGS pictures. We got pictures from Ikaiga off the boat. Um, we're gonna give you guys a little quick update here. Um, what's going on um, with the eruption um, before uh, another update we're going to give later, later tonight. So thanks you guys for joining and watching. Um, thank you guys who have also have, uh, have, have donated to Hawaii Tracker and who have uh, posted some really nice comments about me um, and the rest of the Tracker team. So thank you guys so much for your support and um, for uh, all your kind words. So thanks for that. So yeah, before I take off to take the kids to the zoo briefly here, um, and then meet Ikaika at the hub later on, I hope. Um, Ikaika right now is over at uh, Orchid Isle Ford uh, with their promotion. Uh, they're selling cars to support Puhonuo Puna. So you guys check out his uh, his his information is on his feed if you guys uh, wanna wanna know about that. But um, I'll give you guys information here about what's happened in the last last uh, last day or so. Um, what what we know right now, what's going on in the middle of the day. So. Um, Let's see, um, where do I start? Um, so yesterday we had the, had the, the, the surge that uh, came through the system um, that actually uh, uh, seemed to kind of go close to Halanui again, but then basically did not go any closer to Pohoiki. So uh, that's, that's, uh, that's still um, unchanged in that area. But basically, we have had another collapse event um, at about 2.40 this morning, I believe, um, from the summit. And uh, we didn't have anyone on the ground watching exactly at that moment, about an hour, hour and hour and a half later from there. Probably about an hour from there. Um, so maybe around 3.40, the surge might have started at Fisher 8. I'm not really sure exactly how big a surge there was, what's going on there. You know, I don't have any visual reports of this particular one. Although the USGS uh, um, reports uh, they've published today um, seem to indicate that they believe that there, there was a surge and it's coming through and it's working its way down the system very much like the one did uh, yesterday or the evening before. So um, the surge happened at about 2.40 in the morning and so we estimate that that pulse probably came, well, that, 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 that the, the surge wave, the beginning of it, came through the area around Haleka Mahina, um, Cinder Road area, um, sometime around four in the morning. And that's important because um, this morning we got an early report of some bright new glow occurring. Oh, let's see, I got a lot of glare here. Let's see if I can fix this for you guys. It's a report of a, some, that one's stuck. Some bright new glow. How does that work? Kinda, it's kinda bright out here and I gotta be out here to get the signal, so uh, that's that's how it's gonna be, I guess, just for today. So, anyways, we have a here's a, a photograph of the the glow taken from the ocean. Um, I believe it was by uh, uh, Kainoa on uh, Ohana, all of us, vessel Ohana from Kalapana Culture Tours got this photograph. And this was was uh, significant because um, maybe you can see over here this little spot right over there, that little piece of glow. That's the direction of Fisher Eight is over there. So over here there was this huge, huge bright glow that we actually uh, were. were really concerned about this morning, wondering what might actually be happening there. We checked the earthquakes, there were no earthquakes in the area, so it was not a new fissure. Um, we were looking at the, uh, any kind of imagery from the channel, and it was hard to see what happened there as far as the channel went, until we got some reports this morning from, um, from Ikaika as well, who passed on a pilot report. So, um, well, let me, let me jump to that here, where we have that. So, here, you guys may have to, let's see if I can get the angle any better here for you guys. There, it's not too bad. All right, so you guys can see Fisher Eights up here, and here's a lava channel coming all the way through. And what's happened is it started a fire. We took us a while to figure out exactly what was going on here, but all this black zone right through here, this is all burn scar right here. So all that glow actually came from a big fire that was started by some action of this channel, um, either spilling over the top. We have reports from the pilot that it actually broke through the bottom and spilled through the bottom in a seep seep kind of scenario sorry you guys there we go that's a little better so forget the glare you guys can go on hawaii tracker and get all these images that are posted there and see see them in their better resolution as usual so anyways um let's zoom in on that a little bit here and give you guys a little bit better idea 
um, somewhere in the area of here. We, we think we see a little, little silver spot here, which might have been a surface spillover, although levels in the channel seem fairly low. So if it spilled over, it was like a brief thing, and now levels went back, back down by the time this photograph was taken when a USGS arrived there. Um, or it could have been a seep out at the bottom, or both. You know, basically a, a, uh, are thinking that the pulse, uh, well, not the pulse, I should say the surge, the surge of the lava, actually came through this area probably around four o'clock in the morning or so. So that was, might have been like about an hour and a half after that initial surge came out of Fisher 8. So yeah, we see the, the burning fire line over here on the west side. It's probably still going and moving across. We've had reports of people smelling smoke um, in HPP and um, other parts of the island. Um, so right there, that's a line of fire right there. And there's kind of goes behind here. Either some smoke back over here. There was another kind of lobe of the fire that came out in the front over here and burner still smoking over here and a little piece of dry grass which at the time of this photograph hadn't burned in between and this hill right here is Halika Mahina crater the crater crater is up in the hill Halika Mahina cone and yeah PGV would be um kind of right up in there somewhere in that area right in there kind of in the background of background of that so that's the the, the relevant photograph we have uh, one released by USGS later today which is this one. You guys can catch that on the USGS Volcano site or you can see it. Um, I'm not sure where else it's posted. It might, might go up in Hawaii Tracker as well, I'm pretty sure. Um, kind of a reverse angle view of that where you can really can see that line of fire burning really well right there. So we were really worried about that possibly being a big breakout this morning um, because of the glow. And I know that there were some stories circulating that there was a big breakout. But uh, the Hawaii Tracker team was monitoring um, the police scanner and um, checking on all the imagery coming in and we basically were able to, to, to deduce that there was not anything happening to the north where people were being affected it was all in the south that it, in the end was not an overflow uh, a lot, well it was a small overflow that set off a big fire rather than a big overflow and that's kind of what we have what we know about that so far so um, there are some structures in that area but it's mostly kind of wooded the area where it's burning that we know of so um if there's anything threatened in that area, we don't know that it don't know about it in particular. We just kind of know that it's kind of going through that brush area right now. But we'll check back on that and let you guys know as soon as we have any evidence of anything like that happening. So also in this photograph, if I can zoom in enough, you kind of guys maybe maybe can see if I point it out at least that this big lava channel that's coming around here gets about as far as here. You really can't see that very well, can you? It's about as far as here, and then it kind of pulls up. So let's look at the other photograph of that. Um, which is over here. So let's give you some orientation. I'm sorry about the light and glare, you guys, but I'm kind of struggling here with either the connection or the light, both. So um, right in here, this is Pukapoho, right there. And let's see if I can make this any brighter. Oh, nope, it's already as bright as it gets. Okay, well, so Pukapoho is over here. Back up a little bit. River lava comes over here and it makes this big bend right right up off the photograph right here. So here's the area where it starts going south towards the Halanui and Pohuiki, kind of which is over here. You guys can see the ocean entry is still present, so lava is still moving through the tubes. There's a little bit of leaking, you can see a little bit of red kind of in the area right through here and kind of a little bit of gas all the way through there. But it looks like the amount of lava coming through with a surge front is once again not fitting through the tube. The USGS has uh, given us a new term for this, they call it, they're calling it overplating. The lava flow is overplating the old tube. So too, there's too much lava to fit inside the tube, so it's going over the top of it as well. And that allows it to kind of spill out over the side. So you can see there's a lot of spillover going towards the east side here, right along the edge of Pu Kapoho, Kapoho Cone, Green Mountain, and whatever you guys like to call it, right in here. And you see this big lobe over here also seems to be kind of leaning a little bit that way, right, as opposed to one of the, some of the other ones we saw a couple days ago, which were going more in this direction. So we still have to wait and see. Um, we still have to wait and see um, exactly where that thing is going to go, where it's going to lead. Um, but that's the, that's where, where we are right now is looking for where that front's going to advance um, by tonight. So when these evening photographs come through, we'll know more about whether this is like a little overflow that's going to have enough lava to go down to the coast, or whether it's going to be just like one of these little small surges that spills over the top and then kind of pauses like the one that we thought might actually go towards Pohuiki, which didn't. The one that went before that, that went towards Pohuiki along the coast, which didn't get all the way, although it did take shacks and bulls. Um, so uh, uh, that's that's the status of that flow towards Pohuiki right now. Um, one thing that's worth mentioning is that uh, yesterday I, I talked about, oh, okay, so well, well, real quickly, um, I see your comment, Carol Potter, and um, I will pass your comment to the Hawaii Tracker team to, f 
figure out where John Davidson's farm is and we'll see if we think that he's um, what, we, what we can say what we can say about that for you guys but uh, right now I gotta, I'm gonna keep going with a broadcast so I can get going um, and uh, I just wanted to share with you guys here I'm gonna turn this camera camera around now, yesterday I showed, showed you guys a, a, a photograph from midday mid-afternoon showing the, the lava flow kind of um, Heading um, the, the surge, kind of renewed surge coming back through the system. You know, we, I was thinking maybe it might have been a secondary surge. I wasn't sure if that was kind of like a splashing or a resonant kind of signal. But after thinking about it some more and looking at some of the other evidence, um, it seems like it, like there may be some blockages happening happening in the channel up there in that area of the curve, uh, the area around Pukapoho. And if there is some kind of blockage, even if it's a partial blockage and not all the lava can get through, then I think it's dislodged. You can kind of get these, these um, overplating events as well, right? Where the lava is coming down and refilling what looks like a dried up channel. So there's a possibility of that going on as well. And, you know, it's, it's, it seems like the combination of debris blocking the channel um, might, also, and might also cause a flow to back up and spill over upstream as well. So you might have a con combination of the surge um, surge lull kind of pattern um, on top of the, the blocks that might be possibly happening in there as well. So you know, um, it seems it seems that the situation there is still fairly unstable. So we'll have to keep an eye on that that blockage area of what's going on there. But uh, essentially, after after that photograph I showed you guys last night um, or the, yesterday afternoon about the, the that kind of overplating flow coming back through. Um, the photographs from last evening um, showed no glow over by Pohuiki, and then that flow um, did not really um, go over top of the ground. That one did not do any more overplating. It basically back, went back through that same area, back into the tubes, and that was the end of that. So that so it wasn't really a real surge. It was like a like a smaller, almost like a wave coming across the system. That's why I'm suspecting it might have been a blockage. In fact, since it didn't actually uh, go over top and a big big volume all the way to the ocean. So that made it made it suspicious. Like it wasn't really a big surge coming all the way from Fisher Eight, but rather some kind of blockage that was cleared off by cleared off by the ponding of the lava kind of above it. So, um, so yeah, that's that's basically it. Um, I could show you the picture guy from last night, but you know, basically you, know, you see the lava kind of goes right here, and then from right here it disappears underneath the crust. Which um, in this photograph you can see the lava is actually on top of the crust, and on the one yesterday it kind of fused into the middle of it right there, so it was going into the into the flow and into the tubes that way. A um, couple last pictures I can show you guys. Uh, we have, um, oh, this is from last night. But where is the one? one photograph, um, well, let's see, we have a USGS one coming over here somewhere. No, I don't have it. But there's a USGS photograph from this morning. I'm not sure if this is ac exactly it, but uh, you actually can see that, you know, Pohuiki is still there. Um, there's a little bit more fume from this west-south southwest end of the flow so there's a little bit more lava kind of oozing over here and that's um, uncomfortably close still and we hope it's not oozing out any farther up but i don't see any action right in this zone right in here and the main entry is farther over at halanui farther to the north so um there's that and then one final thing i wanted to point out to you guys um this is from the lava cam um you guys can uh, uh find the, the link at tracker once again um, and this is showing just a screen capture of like how much gas has been noted coming out of Fisher 8 recently. So anyone who's down in the area of down in Lower Puna um, might see this giant cloud which is covering the area coming from all the gas in Fisher 8. So that's what I know is going on right now. And thank you guys. Thank, thanks to the guys at Tracker, Dan DuPont and Ryan Finley and Les Peterson who's put out some new maps today trying to analyze the, the shape of the new lava flows. Um, Every, all other contributors we have there, I haven't mentioned my name, who maybe don't want as much attention. Um, thank you, thank all of you guys. Um, thank you guys who've donated to the, the fundraising campaign. Um, we'll keep doing it, but we might, uh, I might, might uh, um, just keep uh, uh, coming to your responses. You know, um, I'll com keep interacting with you guys on Facebook um, as you guys put up more comments, those kind of things. And uh, we will. Um, do another update later tonight. Hopefully I'll catch up with Ikaika to do it, and hopefully we'll have some photographs um, as well. But if not, we'll maybe can do one anyways. And that's the kind of quick version of what I have to share with you guys. So you guys who are just joining in recently, I'll let you stop and and um, start from the beginning. But kind of just to recap, um, Pohuiki is still there. The flow has not moved closer. The main entry is at Ahalanui still. Um, 
the surge that I thought might have been a surge coming through last night. Maybe it was just a partial blockage and clearing. But there was an earthquake this morning at 2.40 with a, we suspect, a surge post came through beginning at 4 o'clock. Spilled over by Haleka Mahina and began a big brush fire um, that kind of burned most of Haleka Mahina and may still be burning and smoldering in that area over there um, south of the channel. Um, we have not heard any reports of anything happening in Papaya Farms. Um, there is not, in fact, uh, any large spillover, any large breakout going anywhere out of the channel that we know so far. As far as we know, most of the lava is still in the channel and is going back towards the Halanui. And that I showed you guys that kind of um, surge front as it was kind of moving and spilling in the area around Pu'ukapoho, um, spilling a little bit to the east, um, but uh, has not reached the ocean yet. So that's the brief update there. Um, I'm gonna go take the kids to the zoo. So I'll see you guys in a little while. Um, thanks again for our support and stay classy, Puna. Aloha.